Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here to set up our animations is actually call a function named set up idle action, or you could, uh, let's go with animation, we'll change a little bit from my notes. Set up idle animation, and then we're going to do that same thing for jumping. So we'll set up our jump animation. And our walk animation. Dead animation, right? Why not? I don't, so far in, in my playing around with this, I have not really made him die, but I have made him lay down. So it's pretty much the same thing. All right, so obviously we're getting a little note that's just saying that, uh, hey, you, you, know, you haven't set up these um, functions yet. So let's go ahead and uh, stop it from complaining. So we'll just paste these down here. And each one of these is really just about the same. We're, um, we're ultimately left with an SK action that plays the animated frames. And again, we've already seen an SK action in here that we set up uh, via the timeline, which is that one uh, animate with textures. This is essentially the same thing, but uh, we're just doing it programmably. Okay, and we can call these you know, as needed for whatever the character is doing. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is uh, make them all um, variables declared up here so that we can uh, run them from any one of our functions. Okay, so this just sets them up and basically feeds in the information to this action that is holding on to them at the end. Uh, so we got our walk action, we got our idle action, and let's start copying and pasting these. Uh, dead action and what am I missing the jump action okay all right so let's scoot on down here and even though we've already got it you know set up in the uh, layout file we're gonna also set up the idle animation here because we need to go back and forth you know if he stops running or something that we're walking whatever we want to go back to him idling again all right, so first thing we're going to do, and don't worry, we're only really just going to do this once because we can copy and paste most of this for each one of these. So we're going to say let atlas, and this is going to be SK texture atlas, and this is going to be named, and this is actually the name of the texture atlas over here. You don't have to put in the dot at atlas part of it. You do have to spell it correctly, though. Uh, this is uh, going to be dude. And uh, if you if you didn't use a texture atlas, you just put your images inside of here. I'm pretty certain we can just you can just skip over that. I'll I'll give you. I think I've got some alternate code I can give you. Uh, so let's just assume you're doing it the way I'm doing it now. Var array. This is going to be an array type. This is going to be uh, we're specifying this is a, the the contents of the array are all going to be string uh, values and. Uh, now what we're going to do is write var for var, and let's go ahead and put a little parenthesis in here. I equals a one, and I'll explain this once I get it set up here. Uh, I've only got three idling frames, so this this makes a little bit more sense if um, you know if you had let's say 100 frames or something like that. Uh, otherwise, what we could have just done is go ahead and set up this array with the values already in it. But um, again, this this you're gonna want this code like this, uh, just for other projects. Believe me, uh, if you did want to see it in a, how to set up an array uh, without going through a for loop, you could just put in here. Uh, well, I think my frames are called resting one, resting two. Actually, they're gonna look like that. So yeah. It would be pretty easy to just do this and not worry about the for loop. Ultimately, we're left the, with the same thing, but if you had 100 frames, you're not going to want to type out 100 entries in your array like that. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, uh, feed in here the names of these. So we're going to say let name string, and this is going to equal string, and then with format, and the format is going to be pixel oh I'm sorry it's a just resting and take that part of it out 
I percent I. There's actually a couple ways you could do this. That's one of them right there. So essentially it just takes whatever the value of I is at the time of the for loop and it replaces that in there with, you know, replaces out the percentage I with this. There's actually, I this is probably, probably a little bit better if I use a different variable other than I because you're probably thinking, oh, hey, if I used B, I could do B here. That's actually not the case. The I just stands for uh, integer in this case, right, that what's getting replaced and then this I value could just be anything. So, you know, if we did B here, we'd do B, B, and B, right? Okay. Uh, an alternate way you could have written this would be uh, name string two equals string, and I believe you could get away with just writing resting, and then this is how we print out any old variable. I think that would just do the exact same thing. Of course, we'd have to close it off. So you got two versions in there, both perfectly acceptable, I think. All right, so then what we're going to do is take our array, so array dot append, and we're going to put that name string inside of the array. At a certain point, we're going to stop seeing all these yellow warnings over here. They're just telling us that we haven't used it yet. And now we've got an array that's got all of our... Uh, name strings in it, and if we did want to test this out, we could print it just to see. Feel free to skip ahead if you already know how to do all this. All right, get that out of the way. All right, so you see, <laughs> that's exactly what I put in over here, right? Uh, but there's another step, and this time around, we're going to do another for loop, and we're going to write var. Uh, Let's let's just pick on a different variable this time around. Uh, k equals zero, and while k is less than the array dot count. Okay, so basically, while this is less than the the number of items inside of the array that we set up earlier, that's what the dot count gives us. And keep in mind, we've only got three in there. So while k is less than three, we're going to iterate through here, and yet again. We're going to write k plus plus, so we increment that value up one each time. And I, sorry, I think I overlooked ex fully explaining this, but that's what this does: is it just makes it go up one each time, and then eventually you're not left with a for loop that just ke keeps iterating over and over and over again. All right, this time around inside of the loop, the loop, what we're going to do is create a uh, texture variable. So we're going to say let texture. This is going to be an SK texture. And if you are, are curious what that is, an SK texture object is an image that can be applied to SK sprite node and SK shape node objects, blah, blah, blah. So basically just the image that you're seeing. And this is going to equal atlas.texture named. And then uh, we pull out of here the, or we write array, and then I, or I'm sorry, K in this case. So whatever k equals at the time, let's say the first time around this is going to be 0, then we're pulling out the first item in the array because arrays, you start at 0, iterating through them. So next time this runs through, when k equals 1, what this is going to be is actually the second item inside of the array, which is resting 2. So we're just making textures with basically all these names over here and yeah each time around what we're doing is oh and you know what we've got to um, we've got to then um, insert them inside of another array that is going to be uh, holding on to all of these SK textures so what we're going to do is write var atlas textures and the type of this uh, particular array is going to be SK uh, texture. You can do this a couple ways. SK texture. There we go. We'll, we'll kind of keep to the same pattern we did before cr for creating an array. So you can write equal sign SK texture and then your parentheses right here. Um, oddly enough, my notes actually have it like this, which obviously works as well because. That's what I was testing with, but uh, we'll, we'll use that. And then uh, atlas texture dot append. So again, we're going to 
append or we're going to add to this array and of course this time around it's just texture inside of there and then come down here and finally we're going to set up an sk action and it's going to be atlas atlas oh you know what oh yeah atlas animation equals if i can spell correctly equals sk action dot animate with textures there we go and what it's asking for here and you can see it's hinted at uh, it wants an array full of what sk textures so we're going to give it our atlas textures and then we decide the time per frame now keep in mind i've only got three frames and i want this to be kind of looking like a clunky old ar retro arcade game so i'm going to only do one divided by 10 here uh, most often in games you're going to do like one divided by 60 or basically 60 frames per second but again because i have so few and i want it to look retro i'm going to do one divided by 10 so it's a uh, run through them pretty slow and then you've got some other parameters in here resize uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put true in there and then restore is gonna be false and if you want a little hint as to what uh, these do you can always um, just kind of click right here and it'll give you some quick help but the resize uh, if true the sprite is resized to match each uh, new texture if false the size of the sprite remains at a constant size I'm kind of second-guessing whether or not I should have done true there uh, and then <laughs> restore is going to be uh, a False and this is uh, when the action completes the sprites texture is restored to the texture it had before the action uh, completed and uh, well, we're going to be looping these so Restore doesn't really make much sense because basically we're going to be taking care of switching to the next um, S SK action of animation ourselves, but that's you know it's something to consider uh, for future reference. And then finally, I'm going to say idle action equals SK action dot repeat action forever, and then I just put it inside of here that Atlas animation. So what we just set up right here. So we finally just basically end with an action that is repeating the animation over and over again. And if you remember, there's our, our idle action that we declared up here. Okay, so like I said, it's a little convoluted to do all this, but um, it's it's that code that you just copy from one project to the next. Um, and it it's funny because now that, you know, when I teach these things, I look back and I go, wow, maybe I... I've really been copying this code a long time because there's things like adjusting, you know, how I made the array uh, and a few other little notes in here that I was thinking uh, uh, should have maybe rewritten this from scratch before teaching it. So anyway, uh, but we got it here and uh, we're done with it. I do want to point out that if you didn't use that um, atlas right here, there is another way to make a texture. So you could just write let uh, texture uh, sk texture equals and then you can just write sk texture um, image named okay and then you again you just put in there array and then k so that's if you were pulling it out of the assets catalog so at what point you know you don't need that and but otherwise everything else runs the same and i'll just put a little comment uh, right here uh, if not using the dot atlas folder all right, so uh, we should be able to then come over here to the top and make our character uh, run this idle action self dot run action. Of course, we're really not going to see it because what he's already got that a idle action in there essentially from setting it up in the uh, the game scene. But that's okay. But um, because these were set up as optional. Um, Basically, they didn't initially have a value. Uh, you do have to put in here that exclamation point uh, when you want to run it. Uh, we've spent a lot of time writing this, haven't we? Let's go and really quickly set up the other ones. So I'm going to take everything over here. I'm going to put it into our uh, walk action. And uh, I believe in the atlas, I've actually got this called run. That's OK. We'll just put it here, run. And this time around, I've got four frames. So I'm going to replace in there four for the dead animation. Paste that in there. These are called dead. I've got a few more frames in this one. This goes up to seven. So I'm going to put in here seven. 
And actually, of course, don't want to forget to do this. Got to replace out dead action. Uh, and then this one is going to be our walk action. And actually, for our dead action, we just need to run this uh, the one time. So we're not going to repeat it. So what we can do is we can just take that out of there and just make this equal animate with textures. And then for our jump one, we're going to do something slightly different. Let me go ahead and just copy from here, paste into this. Let's go ahead and put in here jump action. And this, we just have three frames for the jump. Just, just type in there jump. Set that back to being three. And what we're going to do with the jump is uh, basically decide at the end of it what to go back to. So um, we're going to crowbar in here a um, little SK action called run SK action. This is going to equal SK action dot run block. And what you can do from here is do an opening and closing of these squiggly brackets and then put code inside of here um, with that uh, colon at the or semicolon at the end of it that you want to run. So what we'll do is write self dot um, how about what to do after jump. Okay. So essentially just write it like you would any other function that you're going to call. Uh, you do have to put in there self though because it's inside of this block. And then let's come down here and we'll write func what to do after jump and we should stop hearing a complaint about that at that point. There we go. All right. Um, well, the only thing it's complaining about is that we haven't actually used this particular action. So what we're going to need to do is put it in as part of a sequence. So instead of repeating the jump action forever, which really doesn't make much sense, uh, we're going to write SK action sequence and then you can run as many actions as you want in order. So all you have to do is put in here opening and closing brackets and then you just list them out. So the first one's going to be our atlas animation and the next one's going to be run. Okay. So we don't really have enough code right now to, to kind of properly decide what to do after uh, after jumping. So just for right now what I'm going to do is just write self dot run action and then let's go to our idle action. right? And for the jump, you might want to make this occur over even less time. Let's say just like um, three frames per second, basically. All right, so uh, I guess so that we can at least test this, let's change this out to a walk action so we visually see that he's doing something uh, when we run this that's different than what he was doing before. And probably too, I guess he would start off walking, right? All right, so there we go. Our little guy is cruising around. If we uh, if we shut off seeing the the physics around him, it'll probably look a little bit better. And there he is. He's ready to start cruising, right? It's like a little toddler he wants to start hanging onto the ottoman, cruising around. So uh, let's uh, come back in a new video. And we'll actually program in the controls to uh, make him move.